السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Dr. Hanad al Hudali, um, I'm honored uh, to be a part of this um, 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 symposium. Uh, I will be presenting today the impact of early uh, simulation based education in the clinical performance of the uh, medical student in the clinical year. So, my objective today will include overview of the current role of simulation in internal medicine, why simulation is crucial in the preclinical year, and our humble experience with early exposure to simulation based education. So, let's go through a little bit of introduction. So, medical simulation is widely used as innovative technology for teaching and assisting medical students. Uh, medical undergraduates students are facing challenges in applying basic science knowledge to the clinical practice during their clinical years, which is fourth and fifth and sixth year. Due to minimal contact with the clinical cases and limited opportunity to develop systematic approach to solving a problem uh, with the required uh, clinical skills. And this is mainly due to large number of the student and a limited number of patients, at least in our hospital. In many centers, medical simulation in the undergraduate medical education has been adopted to bridge the educational gap between the preclinical and the clinical year. And simulation provides the best environment for practicing, assessing the clinical performance that resemble reality. Also, it provides opportunity for repetitive practice without harming a real patient. Simulation has been shown to be effective tools for teaching procedural skills, diagnostic skills, communication skills, and for developing self-confidence. Simulation has been shown also to be an effective tool for teaching um, all these skills and for developing self-confidence. Uh, existing evidence favor the integration of simulation-based education into the undergraduate medical and nursing curriculum. So at at King Abdulaziz University Hospital, specifically in, during the internal medicine rotation. Um, so the clinical skill and simulation center we have is a state-of-the-art training center that can be used as an excellent resource in teaching and evaluating medical students and other health healthcare professionals. Unfortunately, during the fourth and the sixth year, the medical students have minimal exposure to the simulation tools uh, during the rotation in the internal medicine. So most of their clinical session was taken at the bedside in the real medical world. And the maximum exposure that they got in the simulation is actually during their formative and summative assessment. It's mean during the exam, the OSCE exam. So formal and structural integration into the current medical curriculum does not exist currently. Our faculty member in the internal medicine are facing challenging relate, challenges related to students lacking the motivation to prepare clinical cases, interact in the former clinical sessions. The student clinical performance in the exam are also uns unsatisfactory. As the student number increase each academic year, the number of patients available for their clinical practice diminishes. As a result, our students lack the benefit of repetitive clinical exposure in a safe environment and the opportunity to learn from mistakes without harming a patient and having an effective feedback. As a faculty members, we have observed in the last 10 years that our medical student communication skill, diagnostic skill, and even procedural skills have been below average. 
Through simulation, students can master these skills in a risk-free environment with deliberate practice, reflection, and feedback. Also, this tension-free tension platform for practice will enhance students' self-confidence and consolidate their knowledge prior to the real clinical practice. Simulation-based education should be integrated with the clinical practice and is not intended to replace the need to, to learn in a real clinical environment. So we are not an advocate to cancel or to delete the real patient uh, practice, but simulation-based education should be in parallel with the real patient uh, experience just to enhance their clinical experience, improve patient cares and safety. So initially, based on this information and this knowledge, we wanted to start integrating the simulation-based education directly in the medical curriculum, but we came up with a certain challenges. One of the challenges that we had is we need a dedicated simulation coordinators or a champion in the internal medicine. Also, we need some freedom to get the workload released for the interested faculty to have the time to develop their plan, knowledge about the simulation-based education. Also, most importantly, we need to create a time slot in the current curriculum so we can integrate the simulation in the preclinical and the clinical years. So these challenges prevented us from doing the a true and the structural formal integration. So, me and the student, we came up with the idea of doing what we call the preclinical summer course. So basically, we conducted nonprofit voluntarily summer course for the graduate graduated uh, third year medical student. The instructors and the mentors of the course were basically not a faculty; they were fourth and fifth year medical student. And those students that we choose, we choose them after they pass an entry interview where they present their clinical and lecturing skills. So the course was done over three weeks period and took place in the simulation center. It consisted of theoretical and simulation based clinical examination session. The physical examination stations were conducted at the structural uh, clinical examination and a part of a case scenario. So it's mimic the reality. The content of the course of the curriculum was driven mainly from the study guide, the blueprint, and the competency of the Saudi Med framework. All the educational material provided for those students were reviewed by the academic faculties according to their specialties. So this is the, just a glance at our schedule that we did. So it is done over three, uh, three weeks period. This is a first week, second week, and third week. Just in the beginning of the first week, we did the pre-mock exam, just to know what we are dealing with. Um, and obviously, uh, the, 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 the student, they did poorly at the pre-entry exam compared to the exit exam. But as you see, it's a variety of uh, theoretical, history taking, and examination. And the examination session were taken in the simulation. And, actu uh, and, and each student, they have their mentors that will teach them the skills required for each um, uh, system in the body. So we use multiple simulation modalities during this course. We use standardized patient. We use mannequin. We use part task trainers. We use role playing during which the student plays one role and another student or mentors play another role. This is providing an opportunity for the student to experience that this similar roles. Uh, and this was very, very important for their practice. At end of each clinical simulation session, the students were given the chance to reflect and receive an overall uh, feedback from their mentors and instructors. What do we observe during this clinical summer course? We observe that the students demonstrate the essential skills in history taking and physical examination during the exit exam, largely improved compared to the pre entry exam. There is a great impact. We observe the great impact of peer teaching as a learning tools. Most of these, actually all of these sessions were given by fourth and fifth medical students. So this is a huge tools that we are missing for many years, which is the peer teaching. 
Also, we, we observe the importance of future structural and formal integration of simulation-based education in the medical curriculum. So also, we observed, and actually statistically, students who attended the preclinical summer course performed better in the final exam in the fourth year and developed better self-confidence. And this is the faculty members who um, uh, told these students, they observed it, and immediately they asked them if they attended the preclinical summer course or not. So what now? What did we got from this um, experience or experiment that we did during the summer? So we did it for the second time this year, the preclinical summer course, even though we have the pandemic of COVID-19. And also we came with, um, I think it's a big achievement that we have now a, a true early clinical experience curriculum in the third year. Unfortunately, last year we couldn't do it as we want because of the pandemic but we're going to start this year uh, it's a part of the curriculum it has the same objective and structures as the preclinical summer course in form of preparations of those students for the clinical year and it will have the same uh, theoretical and a clinical part and by the way i'm the head of this curriculum um, in the third year uh, medical student so uh, this is all my uh, talk. Um, thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I'm happy to hear. Thank you.